Holy shit. Don't go to sleep. Don't call your mom. Just listen to Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. Oh, my pantaloons are on fire. That was, that was a weird one, Morgan. I liked it. It was all awkward and weird, just like how I like everything. Who's our guest today? Oh, so I'm just magic. kidding. I know. His name is Jim Tazzy. How are you doing, Jim? I'm, I'm okay. Do you know me? Yeah, I do. I'm a <laughs> fan, actually. We've met. Yeah, we've met. I own one of your tiny little Burt's Tits cones. Oh, you got a mini cone. Yeah, I got a mini cone at Congratulations. the... Congratulations. One of the last shows at that 180... At the now Allen. defunct... 188 Allen Street, which is now three parking spaces. Well, I'm glad they reclaimed that. Yay, reclaim parking space. Oh, Hooray little, for parking spaces. I don't know if I should talk about it, but it was a very funny situation with me towards the end of uh, 188. Oh, yeah. Talk, talk about it. No, I think it's funny. You should tell that story. It's really, I think it's hilarious. Well, I didn't know much about... And will about, be a warning. I'm sorry. I didn't... What, what's the uh, gentleman's name that makes oh, the cheese? Emic. Emic, I'm sorry. Oh, I heard this story. <laughs> I just want to uh, throw it out there. <laughs> oh, you know this? He's infamous I had already. no idea it's that you story. were the face behind 188, and I was totally confused. But yeah, yeah. So, and what was the wonderful gentleman's name they curated? Seth? Sack Six. Yeah, Sack Six. AKA Seth. Super cool dude. And so there was a little bit of miscommunication, and I thought that he ran the Instagram account. Well, that was not the case, and he was like, yeah, let's do a show. And then everyone I talked to, they're like, well, that's impossible because they're tearing 188 down. So how is that even possible? I'm like, but the account typed and said to me, yes. So then there was all this confusion. And then a friend of mine that will not be named was like, oh, yeah, that's the guy who makes the cheese sandwiches there. I'm like, so it's some random fucking guy. A guy not that even the guy that owns the place. Just the sandwiches? guy that makes the sandwiches. I didn't know. No, I think he does... Right? Doesn't no, Emic's the owner. Yeah, he's right. The, I, mean, I didn't I'm, realize but, that. So, so I was like, this fucking random cheese flipping son of a bitch is taking over the account and telling me to book a show when they're going to be knocked down in a few weeks. So I said, your parents must be real fucking proud of you flipping cheeseburgers, man. That's fucking great. Taking over the account and lying to me. Great. And then everyone's like, no, no, that guy runs the space. I still don't know what triggered you to be like so... I was drunk and upset. I know, but why were you upset? I felt upset like I was being else, fucking obviously. jerked around with because one person's telling me, yeah, let's book this show. And then the next person, all these people are like, well, that's impossible because it's being torn down. So I thought I was getting like fucked with. And then when my friend was like, yeah, it's a guy, <laughs> he's the guy that makes the cheese sandwiches. I'm like, oh, the guy who makes the cheese sandwiches. Yeah, but he went right America. to the top. I, I was pissed. Yeah. Well, I know I, Emic was trying to fight it, trying to fight the right. place. Well, being just, to, just I, I apologized. I explained that I had no idea that he, and it, and it, and it to, totally admirable to flip cheese sandwiches. <laughs> My, <laughs> yeah, you, you can't that? knock. You recanted? I You're recanted. Like, I, re, I, I take he it understood. back. He understood. Flipping yeah. cheese sandwiches is an admirable <clears throat> and noble endeavor. When there were too many other foods God available, you, flipping cheese was like You're saving doing God's lives. work. Oh, yeah. But quick question. When you did uh, Wonder Shows and, and you did the puppet on the street with the questions. Clarence. Clarence. Clarence was he ever attacked? Oh, uh, Lots of times, yeah. The, the, he was always uh, attacked. I, I never went on those shoots. It was Vernon. Vernon did the puppeteering. He did Clarence. And John did the camera. And they had one PA. And almost every time someone would try to stab them. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. But was, he was an annoying puppet. Oh, very. I mean, so, yeah, but, you it know. It makes sense. And, My, you know, they would go out during puppet. the day. They would go to the park. So who's in the park during the day? Not working people, typically. It's, you know. Tweakers. Homeless or. Or somebody know, trying to jog. People with mental problems or somebody My, trying to jog, yeah. Someone some, like me. Some have all those symptoms. My favorite bit was that was when he was interrupting the jogger. He's like, what, what are you, you running from? Right. What are you <laughs> running from? And then he puts on the headphones. Of, he's like, what are you listening to? And he puts the <laughs> headphones on him and he goes, oh, my God, it's just the sounds of screaming babies. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so good. That was the stuff that made me, I was dying. Yeah. I love that. There was, there was many genius moments on that show. Yeah, that's true. So how did you get from doing like um, Nick at Night? Was it, is that the, I have the order right. You did Nick at Night first. And then Wonder Shows in? 
Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not really connected. I mean, as far as, I guess, my timeline, I came to New York to work at a, uh, I, I was an animator, so I came to New York to work at an animation company called Broadcast Arts, and they had done a lot of uh, 2D and 3D animation. They had done the, all the um, 3D animations for uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse, the whole title sequence, they did that. They had the model still there when I, when I showed up. I grew um, up on Pee-wee. Yeah, amazing show. But yeah. they had moved to L.A., so they, they weren't shooting there anymore. But uh, so I, I was there painting uh, animation cells and inking animation cells and then doing some, you know, animation stuff. And then, uh, and then I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to, to direct. So I was like, how do I do that? And at the time, uh, me and my wife were a directing team. And uh, we started doing music videos. And then we just happened to kind of get this uh, t- thing at Nickelodeon, TV Land had just started and they needed bumpers, you know, they needed like little commercial interstitials. So they had seen a video we had done, which had a, was a music video and they had a bunch, we had a bunch of different style commercial parodies in it. And they were like, we want to do something like that. So yeah, we did this Twip, whole right? series called, yeah, called Twip for TV Land. Um, and that's kind of when I ran into John Lee, he was working at National Geographic as like a tape logger, <laughs> logging animal footage. And, it, and we became friends. He's, he gave me his, uh, a, a, his cassette tape for his band at the time, which was called Mucka Ferguson. Mucka Ferguson. Which had Chris Anderson in the band, who was also on uh, Wonder Shows and a lot, and um, did all the music for, for Wonder Shows, and then later Xavier. But uh, yeah, that's how I met John, and then he introduced me to, to uh, Vernon, it was on the West Coast, but then he came here because they had started wanting to do Kid Show, which was the pilot for right for Wonder Shows and right, right. And uh, so that's kind of how it happened. They ne- they needed someone that would design animation and um, puppets and stuff like that. So that was your principal role that, there. Was that like was what I what I did. Yeah, making the fun. But John, yeah, John and Vernon did all the writing and all the you know, they're they're they are the comedy geniuses behind the, the yeah. whole thing, uh, and Allison. Uh, and Vernon's part of PFFR, right? What, yeah, what well, is we, we had started this kind of, it was basically just a band. Yeah. <laughs> it, was like a, it was like a parody electro band. I have with, the record. I yeah, bought it oh, at, I'm sorry. at Amoeba Records <laughs> in you San have, Francisco. You have my sympathy. <laughs> um, so, it was, yeah, Vern, Vernon was playing guitar, and he didn't know how to play guitar. I was playing bass and, like, bells and triangles, and I didn't know how to play those either. <laughs> and uh, John was the only, one, the only one who was a musician. He played guitar and drums, and, and Allison played drums, I think, and, and sang. So yeah, we started off as a band, and uh, but it was like during that time that they were working on putting a kid show together. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Because like in my mind, in my memory, you know, from consuming it uh, as media, I always, you know, you see the PFFR production tag at the end of Wonder Shows. And- yes, which was, uh, was an exquisite corpse exercise. Oh, nice. So that's all four of us had a part in that weird oh, apple cool. Would you like? It's like, it looks Freak. like it's made on MS Paint. Did you just like send <laughs> yeah. a JPEG back and forth and say yeah, finish it? I think it was just drawn on paper, but uh, at the time it was probably the, the the best possible digital imaging we could afford, and so it made it look like MS Paint. <laughs> oh, it looked great. Yeah, but like in my memory, I always thought that like PFFR was like the production studio for Wonder Shows. And yeah, well, it, it ended up being that. It been yeah. PFFR ended up being the production company. Oh, okay, okay. But it was just four letters that Allison thought up. Oh, she's like. <laughs> I was like, what does it mean? And, and John was like, we just, she just thinks those letters sound good together. I mean, originally I, I it was just PFR. Right. And at the time when we were starting as a band, we were just PFR, but there was another band called PFR. Really? Yeah. What did, what did they stand for? Well, it was a Christian rock band. Oh, awesome. Ah. So you might want to <clears throat> guess what PFR stood for. I do want to guess. Oh my God. PFR. Uh, P4. P4. What, do, what, do, what do religious people do a lot? Pray. Yes. Yeah. Pray, Father. Cl- close. Four. Four. Rain? Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? Pray so there's rain. a Christian rock band. I think they might still uh, be around called Pray for Rain. I, so we added an extra F, which for a time was just a silent F. And you didn't have there. to deal with talking Pray to that band. <laughs> no, I, w- I wish we did, though. I, I had a, a little tour. weird situation. Uh, we, so uh, my cousin Matt. You met him uh, that works with Colbert. Uh, he used to do Strangers yes. with Candy. And then that, uh, during a certain time, the movie was coming out. And there was this song called Atomic Car. 
that me and my friends wrote the song for. And it was like, it's like this hidden feature on a DVD for the Stranger to Candy movie. And it's like the worst song ever. But um, at the time, our, the name of our band was The Stereotypes. And um, the credits we're going to say at the end of the movie, you know, Atomic Car performed by The Stereotypes. We found that there was another band called The Stereotypes that was based in California. So uh, I was really stoned one day and I was like, let me, let me take care of this. And I found the guy's contact inf- <laughs> I found the guy's contact information and I called the guy from the stereotypes from California. And they've been this established band with like albums on CD Baby and like self-published stuff for, for like years. And I called this guy and I'm like, hey, listen. You know, my name is Morgan and I have a band called the Stereotypes too, and um, you know, you're gonna have to change your name. <laughs> <laughs> you sent us like a straight up, letter? Uh, no, I, I mean, I called the guy that was in the band. Like, his contact was on, like, CD Baby. It was or something. online. And it was I a phone number. I was like, called his phone. I was like, so, so listen, like, we're also the stereotypes, and we have a song and a movie. And um, I, I just wanna make sure, like, whether you change your name or not, we're, we're gonna use it. And he's like, no, dude. He's like, you're not going to use it. And, and I was like, all right, li- listen, let me, let me think of something. And I wait a few hours and I come up with this genius idea. I was like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. So I call him back and I was like, all right, listen. He's like, hey, I'm like, yeah, you know, like there's that cartoon called the Ghostbusters. And he's like, yeah. When I say, you know how there's that other cartoon called the real Ghostbusters? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, so we're going to be the real stereotypes. And I think that probably solves, like, the situation. And he's and like, like, I don't care, dude. No, no, no. I don't know you. Stop no. calling me. <laughs> no. There's, like, a good solid five seconds of silence. And all of a sudden, he's like, listen, motherfucker. I'm calling my lawyer right now. And if you keep on fucking with me, I swear to fucking God, you're going to get a fucking letter in the mail. I'm like, whoa, bro. I thought you were from California. I thought you were supposed to be chill. He's like, fuck you. And so, like, we went with another name. It was too much of a pain in the ass. But so I not, actually, not a stereotypical Californian. No, he was enraged. Well, I mean, so, man, you kind of just, brought the energy first, though. Yeah, right? you just came out swinging. He should have just rolled you're over. Just like you're, you're, we're taking, we're taking this name. Oh yeah, it was a hostile takeover. Yeah, but it he was not takeover. entertained. <laughs> he was not entertained. He so did pissed. he? Did he send some thugs to your house? <clears throat> no, 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 no. He was, he was. I was just like, yeah, let's just leave these guys alone. They're, they're, they're kind of like a bunch of pussies. So what, what, what did you change your name to? Uh, it's really bad. It was the street that we lived on, Delano Grove. <laughs> well, what's my call? Mike Patton had that band with that. They had that song, "Throw Away the tra- Kids of uh, Whitney High." You ever heard of Kids of Whitney yeah. High? Yes. Throw away the trash. Throw away the trash. I only think they have like one album, but that and then there's like... Fart Inhaler. But I don't know if you guys know <laughs> Fart Inhaler. No. Yeah, we could cut that out too because if there's someone that does know who Fart Inhaler is, they get, well, then they've seen it too, and they're just like me. So never mind. You're, you're cooler than us. I'll have to show you Fart Inhaler. That's too obscure yeah, for me. Oh, cuts. it's Fart Inhaler. Fart Inhaler. I mean, I know I, Anal Cunt. That's like I've the heard most of them. Yeah. Uh, I love I their think of. their song Three Eleven. I think it just goes like this. Double, 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 down, down. Dibba, 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 down, down. 311 suck! Ah, 311 suck! Ah, 311! And then it's over. Yeah, they're, they're on average about 25 seconds long. Yeah. 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 What, did you ever have any ba- like bad band names when you were like a kid? Uh, no, I, was, I wasn't in bands when I was a kid. I got, well, I got like a... Well, I, 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 I guess the first band I had was an attempted punk band called Lost Lunch. Nice. <laughs> With my friend... Sean Reese and my brother Joe Jr. and uh, Sean's sister's boyfriend Chris, who was a jazz drummer. Nice. That's that's not the worst. Like, not the worst. Early no. band name. I was actually in a band or tried. My first effort was my friend Sean as well, but he wanted to call the band Corporate Anarchy. Oh, super. That sounds serious. Serious, heady, political. Yeah. I was real into crass. I was like, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And I didn't. Corporate we did, we did, I didn't let it happen. But it's kind of like an oxymoron, right? No, but it did remind me. Oxymoronic? Of of, yeah. I like it. That's a good band name. I, yeah. I, I play with someone now. We, we always throw bands around, but he always loved Crisis Actor. Oh, that's good. Love the name Crisis Actor. Yeah, Crisis Actor. Do you engage in uh, fun conspiracies online to get that true deep I just feel reference? like, I don't know. And then you just start believing everything. You know, yeah, I don't like believe the, the floodgate is open. I don't believe like there's once, aliens once, anymore. 
You don't believe in aliens? I don't believe in aliens well, anymore because the government admitted it. Degrassi, yeah, yeah. What's his Tyson, he was like, you know, obviously if that was the case, then people would have footage of it and we would all see it end of story. Like, it doesn't matter if they were in the military, someone's going to, like, raise a phone and record this shit and it's going to leak. Turns out all of that footage is real. All the stuff that does exist. My dad believes in mermaids. Like that movie Close Encounters was a documentary. Uh, I actually read last night that it was a, you know, it was purposeful programming to get us ready for the eventual reality oh, of yeah, that would make sense. I yeah. heard something completely... E. Right, E.T. too. ...different about Close Encounters. What? This is what I heard. I heard at that time, before that movie, there was a problem with people buying potatoes. <laughs> what? You mean people didn't want to buy potatoes anymore? There was like, people were not buying potatoes. But then... The scene comes where he makes the mountain out of potatoes, which becomes a very iconic scene in Close Encounters. I and this right, jump yeah. starts. This jump starts and jacks the sales of potatoes through the fucking roof. And everywhere, people are buying potatoes and making mountains out of mashed potatoes. I bl- totally like believe that conspiracy. Idaho, Ireland. All these places that, and that's weird too. I, I, what? They both that's fucking. somehow, Morgan, that's somehow dumber than flat earth. I don't know how you did here. it. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> so, yeah, that scene. I, I, I bought, I bought into this conspiracy. You are yeah. into it? You're, uh, maybe I'm wrong. If, you, if you're into it, then I mean, I'm the odd I mean, I'd out. have to check like the potato sales oh, chart. You'll around, see. What, you'll see a pattern. I caught him. No, you didn't call it. I, I caught him research. falsifying potato I, records. I caught him. He's, he's <laughs> in there in best paint, just like going up and down. Like After that movie, people were fucking mashed potatoes here, mashed yeah. potatoes there, specials from um, Roy Rogers Chicken, mashed potatoes. Okay, I can't. Hey. I can't. All right, look into <laughs> it. And, and Spielberg saying, probably I'm had gonna... something to do with like potato stock, right? Oh, probably God. was invested in a lot of potato Oh, yeah. There's a lot of politics stock. in this. Potato stocks like, was let's, fucked. Let's, let's make the potato stock skyrocket. Oh, they jacked it. People yeah. went nuts. Potatoes hey, are have... flying. <laughs> Do your research. Do your research. Well, they, did. they also used them as asteroids in Empire Strikes Back. Oh, word? Yeah. Did they carve them up at all? Or they just no, they, just, the whole th- thing they just threw them into space. Oh, oh man. That. You can't tell me so that kind of stuff. Steer around that. Han Solo. <laughs> I'm going to be up all night, like, pausing the movie, mm. trying to find it. I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's a couple. I, think, well, I don't know if there's a lot of potatoes, but I think there's a couple. There's, I think there's a shoe in there. Mm. Holy they, shit. They threw in some little Easter eggs. Oh. But there may not be an Easter egg, just a potato. Yeah, I think I mean, the potato is the Easter egg. Right. So we're, we're all similar ages. Did you? No, we're not. Similar? I'm older. I'm way older than you guys. A little bit, a little bit. I was born in 1967. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like we're sitting in the wrong order. Right. I'm the youngest, you're the next, and then you're the oldest. Right. Yeah. I grew up, I was born in 85. So I should have a higher chair. Yeah, but Jim, it just means. Yeah, you why should. is my chair? <laughs> you should be like Ringo Starr. Like, uh, <laughs> well, that's why you're in the middle. It just know? means you're cooler than me and. And that's all. It just means I'm decaying rapidly. <laughs> yeah, you're Paul Rappa the Rappa. Why, why I know someone that met, met, met Ringo Starr. I know someone oh, wow. also that, I guess, is like his PR guy. But he doesn't, apparently he, apparently he doesn't shake hands. He goes uh-huh. like this. He, bam- he elbow he does bumps? the elbow. Pre-COVID? Yeah, but is he like, no, yeah, all is he like, clean OCD? Like, whatever. No, I think it's just because he would have had to shake billions of hands and it might have actually like crushed <gasps> But you can fuck your elbow up and as a drummer. Drum. Interesting. Know. Are your hands more important than your elbows in drumming? I don't know. I hope I never meet Ringo Starr because I made a video about him saying he's one of the worst celebrity artists because of, <laughs> of his terrible like MS Paint portraits, which are admittedly like somehow charming, and I kind of love them, but like they're so bad. Do they, do they all say like peace and love on them? And Some of them do. Yeah, yeah. they're just like they're That's funny. Like his catchphrase. Peace I didn't love. know that Ringo Starr was an MS Paint artist, but that sounds. Yeah. Amazing. He's like, it's similar to the PFFR logo in a way. I'll yeah. show you. I'll have to, <laughs> yeah. you know, now now I want to see that. Have you it seen sounds, it? Uh, no, it sounds oh. amazing. <laughs> Let me show you. Ringo Star Art. That's I think you're going to like it. Absolutely fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I can't believe you've never seen this. shit. Uh, here we go. So this is like all of Ringo Starr's art looks like this. Okay. Yeah. And it's just like endless, <laughs> endless like, you know. It's almost like it's from a template. Yeah, sort of. It's like a it's template like in his mind. colors. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's making use of that fill paint, that fill bucket, though. Yeah. There's a little bit more going on making the use of a fill bucket. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was funny. I that like, is actually, funny. Like, yeah, that, you that like purple, one? that purple <laughs> one on the bottom. Is yes, yes. This you is kind what? of that's kind of the aesthetic. Oh my god! Right? I'm trying to think of who that looks like. I, I know who it looks like. Who is it? Gigi Allen. Oh. Kind of. It looks like yeah. Gigi Allen if he was like a. That onion from Parappa the Rapper. That's, that's right. it. The, the onion. It? That's what I was thinking. Oh, yes, wow. That's the onion. You guys are on top of it. I saw the craziest Parappa the Rapper content on TikTok the other night. It was, uh, it was Parappa and he's like, hey, Mitch McConnell, like, tell <laughs> us your plan for 2023. And somebody had like taken the time to edit out a paper, P- Mitch McConnell. You know, he just doesn't respond. And he's like, come on, Mitch, tell us your plan for 2023. <laughs> I got to see that. Hello? <laughs> somebody call 911. That <laughs> oh. sounds... That it made me spit my milk out. <laughs> are you so? What are you doing lately? Uh, are you doing anything? Because I like. I, I'm a VR artist, and I like digital stuff. Uh, I'm like a weird defender of AI because I just like weird tools. You know, like digital tools. I kind of took the plunge when I after I got into a uh, into VR to like make my art practice about that. And I love that you went from you know the Xavier is CGI like some of the first like CGI programming on television actually yeah. like along with um what else uh, Re- reboot reboot right? yeah right yeah well it's definitely post reboot yeah it's after um yeah the, i guess there wasn't much with that look we we definitely wanted a specific look um yeah i guess i'm asking like why you chose that or why you yeah. kind of went into a 3d digital room after that uh, i think well i know we wanted it to look I mean, I'm thinking that this is around like 2006 after Wonder Shows and maybe 2007. And John and Vernon were like, we want it to look like late 90s (laughs) (laughs) animation, kind of like late 90s animation. So they got a bunch of like VHS tapes of like digital artists from like the, you know, 80s and 90s. And, you know, it was very specific with the polygons and very chunky. Yeah. But that kind of like smooth weirdness that, you know, the shapes would have. So they're like, we kind of want it to look like this. Like it's kind of a throwback. And And to me, it seemed kind of funny because it didn't seem like it was that (laughs) that long ago. Like you could just specifically place it at the time. But uh, yeah, I think it was a good choice. I mean, it it ended up to me, it it looks like GTA here. You know, it's that kind of, you know, the characters, the the NPCs are just kind of always rocking. Right. They kind of wanted that. Yeah, but because there was nothing else on television at the time, even though I feel like, because that's interesting to hear that you were trying to bring it back to like an early 90s aesthetic when I feel like the rest, you know, we hadn't caught up yet. So when it came out, like, I think, you know, a lot of people weren't probably making the assumption that that was like some, you know, that was the the best we could do. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best you could do. Which I think was part of the joke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) This is the best adult. This is the best computer animation Adult Swim can do. But then Vaporwave came out and it made everything way cool again. I guess. Yeah, that was. That was around that time. How do you feel about Vaporwave? I don't know a lot about it. Mm. It's basically. You have to refresh my memory because I I know, I know those words, but I'm trying to think. What would you. I'm I'm thinking of uh, Oh, go, go ahead. It, it's, it's basically described more of as a lifestyle, right? It's not just no. uh, an art form, but it's like music. It's like... All right, hold on. Let me, let me push uh, my here glasses. Does that have something to do with that band Air? Oh. No, the uh, French band Air is great, though. I do like it. Air. Yeah, Air. But no, okay, so Vaporwave. Breakdown of Vaporwave, as far as I understand it, is that it was a musical genre first, coming out of around 2014, 13, 12. And how would you describe and the musical genre, though? It's actually very specific. So it takes, like, R&B hits and uh, kind of elevator music, stuff that you would find, oh. like, Or maybe popular. even, like, you know, the uh, Weather Channel would, would right. show, you Sort know. of. It takes, like, yeah, it takes, like, right. chill, easy listening music from the early 90s uh, and late 80s uh, and then cuts it down and, and half speeds it. So you, you make oh, okay. it uh, twice as slow. So it's almost and then you like add chop and beats. screw. Sort of, but it's like, and it was specifically made to be like an anti-capitalist statement <laughs> because it yeah. was supposed to be, um, it was supposed to be like an anti-capitalist thing where it was like, you know, we're taking this elevator, easy listening music and we're going to like slow it down, chop it up and fuck it up. And that's kind of where the visuals came in. So it's, 
a musical styling, but it's also a visual styling that has to do with bright neon colors, um, like old Greek sculptures. Why? Uh, Windows 95 logos. It was because I think it was like the advent of the kitsch, kind of like we were talking about where you guys were trying to make Xavier 90s. Same yeah. vibe. It's like 2016 and they're obsessed with Windows 95. Okay, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I don't think I know anything about the music, but the first thing that came to mind was like the visuals. And, yeah, it looks kind of like neon, like 16-bit graphic type of mm, But, again, visuals, like right? where, where we were talking about the Greek statues, like how how does it? Give how me do a the little Greek bit. statues break into it? Yeah. Actually, I don't know. I honestly think it has to do with the album art for Got the it. first, the most popular Macintosh Plus was the first, like one of the biggest albums to come out of that. Well, that genre had like movement. the sculpture with the checkered floor going yeah. into the distance with a pillar, bright pink pillar. Oh, checkered got floor. it. Yeah. It was a very, but it also it. it also came out of something else that was like I think it was called like Ocean Core or something like that. There was like dolphin. It also had a lot to do with like the Lisa Frank dolphin aesthetic, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, you know, what Echo I mean? the Dolphin. Yeah, Echo the Dolphin is a very huge vaporwave Echo, staple. Actually, Dolphin. you see that a lot, but. Right. I was into that. But yeah, I mean, Xavier definitely wasn't Vaporwave, but it, it was it was based off one of your paintings, wasn't it? The character, character. yeah. Well, the character inspired the, the show. Um, I'd done a painting of a similar character, uh, a beaked kind of Sasquatch with multiple nipples. And uh, I was in LA at the time. And uh, I was missing the East Coast. And I was trying to think of like a new kind of uh, mythological creature that would kind of take me back to my New England roots. <laughs> so yeah, I, right. I painted this weird character wearing I high tops, traversing, traversing the country yeah, with, a, I, with, a, with a club, an oaken club, and uh, on a background of like apple, apple trees. And it was sort of like Johnny Appleseed and Paul Bunyan kind of. Yeah, it was the, the quest, the journey. The, the quest, yeah. And then John, John and Vernon saw it, and they're like, oh, that's a funny character. Mm. Let's think up some stories around it. Yeah, because I remember the themes were always about like new age spirituality, sort of. It seemed to pit like this character that was kind of the embodiment of new age spirituality and like deep inner searching with uh, the townspeople. Uh, yes. Who were strangely really rough for Connecticut. Right, yeah, Burberry, <laughs> Connecticut. Burberry, <laughs> rough town. <laughs> They but were like yeah, kicking the shit out of him in Burberry. Yeah, it was, it was just obscene overconfidence on his part of like, being a shaman and feeling like he could heal people if they would just, you know, listen and, and let him treat them. And he would always, yeah, he would go searching, searching, seeking for something. But I think in the first season he was searching for his dad who he killed um, because he burnt the house down. And then the second season he was looking for his mom. But yeah, the basic idea was he'd, he was considered a freak. So he'd travel from town to town trying to help people. And then he would usually leave the town a lot worse than <laughs> yeah. it was. Yeah. I there. mean, you guys are kind of ahead of the curve with that one because I feel like that issue of like the pseudo, you know, that that core, I don't know what you call it, like trope of people uh, is just like totally off the rails now. You know, it's like people yeah. are really super toxically positive sort of vibe where it's like, oh yeah, just crystals and stuff. Like, so that's like, I don't know. What do you think about all that? Like how, how it's gotten more... More well, I think so. it's, I think it's always been around. I mean, it seems like it, I mean, it really flourished probably in the sixties, you know, the hippies and, and then in the seventies was, was like, uh, you know, very focused on the self and, and, um, you know, Zen, uh, kind of, uh, as a concept and, um, yoga and all that kind of stuff just kind of just seemed to almost corp you know become sort of a corporate thing and then people kind of started cashing in on it there's also the it, theory that it was always a psyop from the cia anyway to make everybody take up a jealousy and be free lovers and all that to like encourage like that. timothy leary was working for the cia that kind of vibe yeah, yeah saying that like there was like trying to encourage that um free spiritedness so they wouldn't be taken seriously to yeah. discredit a movement and then they're easier to control yeah and then you can make them buy potatoes. <laughs> Mountains of mashed potatoes. <laughs> Mountains of mashed potatoes. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that, that, that I love that idea of a character is just like this kind of, yeah, blind, it's like a blind optimism and just like having this overconfidence and total like just bad, you know, wrong, wrong, wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is that's funny. Um, do you think that like, 
because we talk about the 60s having this like vibe and the 70s and the 80s we can always kind of see it in hindsight like do you think i like i feel like it's just so separated and like fragmented but maybe that's just because i can't see what's happening now like i don't know if you've got a beat on that or what you think we're living through right now like what would you satirize right now if you you just got a giant budget and someone's like make the best satire of society yeah i have no idea i'm not I don't think I, I'm good at that kind of thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm always confused. Right. And most, I'm most confused in the present moment. So, yeah, it's hard for me to see, <laughs> see any I kind guess. of <clears throat> trends or, uh, you know. <clears throat> Where do you, like, how, would you start making puppets for Wonder Chosen? Or was it like a long time thing? Like, what was the, what's the first puppet you ever made? The, I was, no, I wasn't making puppets, puppets that long. Um, the, the puppets for Wonder Chosen were made by... Uh, company called Geppetto Studios, mm. and those were professional puppet makers. Those guys were amazing. They had done everything. Um, but no, I'd, I so kind of got kinda in, going off your sketches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, John and Vernon like made up the sketches for the puppets, and then I would kind of refine them, and then we'd give them to the, the, uh, the puppet guys, and they would kind of build a prototype, and they'd say, yeah, change the eyes or whatever, make the, make the arms more noodly or whatever. Um, but no, it wasn't until after Wonder Shows and that, uh, my, actually my sister made a puppet. She just found a basic pattern on the internet and I was like, oh, that's cool. You made a puppet. I always wanted to make a puppet. <laughs> so she taught me how to make this basic puppet. Nice. And then, uh, yeah, so that's where that kind of started. Uh, we kind of, we made some puppets together and then I just once in a while would make a new, new puppet. Of course, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of your sister. I know, oh yeah, I think you know you, I always you've ask mentioned her about that. It. Oh yeah, my god, thank you. I like she. Every post kills me. Yeah, like I think she's funny. one of the funniest people I have ever seen. Yeah. Like her puppets are unreal. I know the she Freddie Mercury. The, oh yeah, the, yeah. She made the Freddie Mercury. <clears throat> have you seen a Freddie Mercury? No, I haven't. Oh my god, and she's. Have she you does met such Saul? A, his puppet. I have. I don't know if I, I've seen Saul. I don't know, if, so. I don't know if I've ever met him. And yeah, I yeah, I, I'm going to have life. to bring him on at some point. Again, he has the soul of a, a Jewish gentleman from the 70s. He was walking his dog in New York City, and his dog ran out into the street and was sucked up into a street cleaning machine, and he was sucked into it as well because uh-huh. his dog was sucked in and he died. He hung on to the leash. He hung on to he his not little, let go. That, it was a chihuahua. Yeah. And so he got sucked in and he died, but his soul somehow found its way into my puppet. And I made him at FAO Schwartz when they had the Jim Henson. I remember that, yeah. Uh, and it was an amazing experience. You get to choose, you know, like his eyes, his hair, his body, what he's wearing, what they're wearing, whatever the case may be. And uh, mine turned out to look like a younger Bernie Sanders. <laughs> It really does look yeah. like Bernie Sanders a little I bit. I mean, again, I'm a Jew, and so like my puppet came out so Jew. He's like, hello, my name is Saul. <laughs> nice to meet you, but also I do like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They are nice. <laughs> uh, I know Anthony Kiedis. He touched me below the legs, which doesn't exist, which was confusing, because I felt that it was like ghost penis. <laughs> ghost puppet penis. And uh, that is my experience with what they call Anthony Kiedis' penis is Kiedis. It's like a uh, Anthony Kiedis phantom penis. Anthony Kiedis phantom penis. That's my new band, my puppet band. <laughs> so I vote, you know, I do karaoke with him, but yeah, yeah, he's funny. And then I, I realized when I wanted to buy another puppet, uh, a lot of the puppets that exist are made by religious companies. They're like oh, yeah. church puppets. Yeah. There, there was so much, so much puppetry in the church. I did not realize. Actually, well, Allison um, did a documentary called Hands of God, which was all about, church I think puppets? it was about church puppets. Yeah. And, and a, it was really about like a puppet. I don't know if it was like a camp or a convention where everyone would bring their church puppets. Yeah. That's right. Up. I've got a, and I'm looking at it. It's time. called it's Hands of, of God. God. <laughs> Hands That's of God. That's an amazing title. It's, it's, a, it's kind of obvious, but it's extremely appropriate title. Good. Yeah. It's so good. Did you see Jesus Camp? No. Oh, that I was a really seen good Jesus one. Camp. There, there's like she's screaming about um, needing to ban Harry Potter. Yeah. But the little kid. No, they're teaching she's wizards. Like, who was saying this? It's like a little kid. Right? No, the leader of the oh. camp. It was sad actually because this kid it's was just, like crying. Yeah. Did you go to church? It's just complete indoctrination. I did. Yeah, I was I was raised Catholic and. Oh, Catholic. I never sect. I never enjoyed church. No. The one the one thing that I that that uh, I did find. 
at least fascinating was um, up until I was maybe like seven or eight years old, I thought, you know, during Mass, that the priest takes the water and he talks about how Jesus turned it into wine. So during Mass, I thought he was actually turning water into wine. So I was he like, is. wow, this is like a magic show. This is amazing. <laughs> and then I mean, you think you got it then. What? That's it. It's supposed to be actually is. It's supposed to be, but then I found out it's, no, it's just wine. He doesn't transform the water into wine, so there's no... You start flipping pews. You're, there's no magic there. You're like, and I was pew, like, that's it. You liars. Pew. You lied to me. You, exactly. No, I went to Methodist Church. Okay. Which is, uh, was started by a reading group. Yeah. So the, whole, the history of Methodism is like they wanted to make a reading, a book club, but the only book in print was the Bible. So they, <laughs> oh, man. So they all got together that's, and that's read the pretty Bible. pretty desperate. Yeah, and then it just turned into a branch of Christianity. Wow. I mean, and uh, that's it. That's to this day, so uh, it's known uh, to being like really milk toast and like not, you know, it's just pretty mm. basic. Because <laughs> it's not about A little that. bit different yeah. here. I'm yeah. a Jew. Are you, I, you I don't think you're Catholic? Jewish. I don't know if you told me that. A little bit. No, I, I uh, my parents tried. <laughs> and I was like, I think I was too hyperactive and I got in trouble a lot. I don't know. I guess they just figured the less school for me, the better. <laughs> I don't know. Like I mean, normal... I dropped out in fifth grade, so. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't work out. I'm, I, I mean, again, it's, it's, you know, my, my grandmother is a survivor. So, you know, we, we have a lot of respect for a lot of things. But for, besides that, I w- was not brought up religious at all. Mm. Yeah. It's just like you know, my parents are two like hobbits. They smoke tons of weed. What age did you stop going to church? You know, as soon as I didn't have to go, which was like 12. after. Well, after you get your confirmation, which is like eighth grade, so I was probably like, yeah, twelve, thirteen. I mean, I still went, but as soon as I didn't have to go, I ne- I never went. Is that how it works in the? I don't know how it works in the Catholic Church. You get your confirmation, it's like you're done. Yeah, you. They're like now you're old enough. Uh, to make your, <laughs> make your own decisions. Right, right. You don't have to have your parents force you to go to church. I, uh, I, I could make my own decisions after they took my foreskin. Yeah. They were like... Do you want <laughs> yours back? When did you lose your foreskin? When I was a little baby. I didn't even have a choice. They took yeah. advantage of I did, me. I didn't either. Did you get and the... And I'm Italian. I don't know why <laughs> they took my foreskin. Did they do it in the like hospital for you? I feel like I should have a foreskin. I'm I a assume, hospital. One. I mean, I was... Again, I, was, I don't remember. I was just a teeny-weeny baby, but I was like... Yeah, I was told it was very painful. Yeah, the, the I'm moil, sure it is. That's what they called that. The really, the more he punched me in the yeah. face. I was yeah. like a baby. Then he spit in your mouth. He spit then... in my mouth, <laughs> <laughs> and then he cut my dick. <laughs> no, but did you have like a traditional, uh, traditional one where like it wasn't I, in a hospital? I, they came and put the right, manuscripts right, on the rack. I think so. And it was yeah. a big party and yeah, everything. Yeah, a little party. Yeah. He yeah. didn't put his mouth on it though. Oh, so did he? They, did they he do save it? Sometimes it? they, they do. do that. Oh yeah. It's a sick thing. They save it. a sick world. <laughs> they sell it to cosmetics companies That's to right. test uh, makeup on. No, they don't. I don't know. I've Obviously heard that. You don't know about like, my. Uh, you don't know about my cosmetics company. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell me more. <laughs> this conversation has devolved into it's called the foreskins. Mo- it's called yeah. the Moyle's Edge. <laughs> no, it's evolved. <laughs> the Moyle's Edge. No, this is where we're hoping. Pretty good. <laughs> Moyle's Edge. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my it's, God. it's turned into a competition now, yearly. Yeah. It's underground, the black market. But oh yeah. Who cuts the cleanest skins? And is, uh, oh. is there a lot of is there a lot of wagering involved? Oh my God. The most money goes you the richest only the one percent do this. <laughs> that this is how they live. You know, it's Pizza Gate, Foreskin. I don't know what's next. <laughs> oh my God. You're, I'm dying over here. <laughs> So, Jim, <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What are you up to now? What are you doing next? Not nothing. Nothing. You're just chilling. <laughs> uh, I've been working on paintings mostly. Right. Do you have any like ideas that you want to just like, yeah, really grab by the foreskin, and swing yes. around? Yes. No, nah, no, I don't. I de- no. I. I feel like I don't that, have that's any. Actually... I don't. I don't do that. I just like. Uh, I, I'm very um, passive when it comes to stuff like that. I'm mm. like, someone will be like, oh, you want to do a painting? And I'll be like, yeah, okay. Do you, yeah, spend, do you go uh, to your painting uh, studio like it's a job? They're like clocking at eight in the morning? And if I had a studio, yes, I would. So where are you painting? I paint in the corner of my, uh, my buddy's apartment. Oh, okay. Nice. Where I sleep on the couch. Nice. 
it's not nice, but it's a, you know, it's a place. <laughs> I, I have a table in a corner, and uh, it's enough space to paint. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. Nice. That's so cool. it's kind of like a studio, but yeah, I'd, I would, I'd probably do as much procrastinating as I would if, as if I had yeah. a studio. Maybe less, because if I had to actually physically go to a studio, I'd probably visit it a lot less. Right. So you're, you're based out of New York City? How long have you been staying yeah. at your buddy's house? About nine and a half years. Oh, so that's, yeah, that's yeah. not like a, well, it seems like you like it. Good it's arrangement. okay. Well, you know, you got a really good friend. I, a very generous. He's that's, like my brother. That's actually like, it, it, that's very important to know that someone has your back, that loves you, that, you know, appreciates who you are and believes in you. It may yes. seem like a small thing to some people, but like, it's very important. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's huge. It's, yeah, it's 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 huge. I I have a great uh, friend Al who lives next to me, and we we have each other's back uh, through thick and thin. And you know, knowing that someone really loves you and has your has your back, like a really good friend, sounds cheesy, but it it makes all the difference in the world. It really does. <clears throat> it does. So. Did you um, when did you come to New York? Like I came to New York uh, around nineteen in nineteen ninety two, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I had, never uh, left. You didn't like try to live in LA or anything. No, uh, briefly, yeah, later. But um, yeah, like I said, out of school, I was doing animation. I was in Rhode Island, but there was a lot of animation work, and uh, I went to RISD. So some people I had known had come to New York and were working at Broadcast Arts, and they're like, "You should come, you know, work freelance." And I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> like oh, yeah. you just come in and you and you you know you work, and it's not like steady, but you get paid. And I was like, "Can I survive like that?" And you have been since? No, I, ha I mean, I did for a while. I was surprised. I was like, oh, I can make like $700 in a week painting animation cells. And, you know, I could find a place to rent for $700 right. a month. Where did you first rent when you got to the city? Um, at the time I was, I was married, so we, we lived... Uh, well, when I, I actually came here first, so I lived on a, a place on Walker Street. Is that Brooklyn? No, it was in... Uh, you know, off Church Street, oh, okay. uh, west, on the west, lower west side. I lower guess. west side, where it gets all. And it was, uh, it was my ex-wife's dad's <laughs> friend who was a contractor, so it was really just the contractor's office. Oh, nice. And there was like a space with the bed and the back. And he's like, if you give me three hundred fifty dollars a month, you can stay here. Nice. But like, you know, <laughs> five thirty in the morning, these construction workers would come in, like using the bathroom and stinking it up, and like, you know, just farting and it was horrible that's awesome i had a hor equally horrible story I, I my first place i rented was in bath avenue like near coney island okay. and it was a 700 dollars a month because it was 2008 and still uh, not bad right not bad uh, but one it was, bedroom it was bad i'll tell yeah. you why it was bad it was a futon in a living room in a railroad apartment it's kind of like what i got now and <laughs> It was 700 a month to live in thing. It was, there was a wee-wee pad for the dog on the floor. And yeah. like I open up the, the window and it's just brick on the other side oh, of it, like man. immediately. Yeah. And every night at like 3.30 in the morning, the landlord would bust open. The landlord was a guy named Diesel. And he had like a tattoo of his old dog on his head. Uh -huh. And he'd be just smoking a Newport and just like kick the door in basically and be like, it's all right, Painter, go back to sleep. It's chill. It's chill. And he yeah. called me Painter number two because there was <laughs> a guy above me who also That's did graffiti. I uh, wow. I moved to Brooklyn in 2007 or 2008, and it was 345 Elder Street off the Halsey L. Mm. And uh, it's just this big brick building, and every like behind every door was a different world, whether it be a music studio or a band or a punk rock or whatever. It was a weird place. Um, and I was in uh, apartment number 13, and I lived with this guy named Nick Holmes. I won't get into Nick because there's a lot of stories there. He's a beautiful man. But his dad wrote Dazed and Confused, and it was stolen from him by Jimmy Page, brought to the Yardbirds, and then brought to Led Zeppelin. But he never sued him. I don't know why. I have no idea. Finally, in 2010, he, tried, he did. Didn't make any money off of it. I mean, if you look it up, like the original Dazed and Confused, it's the exact song. It's just him playing acoustic, but it's sang the same exact way. It's the exact same song. He actually recorded it. He, yeah. Before this, that. I guess Jimmy Page walked in and saw him playing live in New York City and literally just lifted the whole song. Wow. It was, I, the song was called Day Is It Confused. The rest of the lyrics were different, but it was sang just like Robert Plant sang it. It's crazy. Like, look up the original Day Is Confused. But anyways, this guy went on to become 
a jingles master. He uh-huh. wrote, Gillette, the best of my oh, own could get. Oh, that's a good one. And be all that you can be. And wow. you know, he oh, became wow. a jingle master. Yeah. So like, he's like, you know what? Fuck days. That's confused. army Check money. this out. Yeah. So he has like, a, I think from what I understand, this guy has a jingles factory where people are just like writing shit all day long, like jingles here and jingles there. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's fucking awesome. Anyways, Gillette and the Army song. That's, and my that's place, impressive. My that's place, a really impressive. Yeah, that's massive. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. My place cost four seventy five, but I didn't have walls. I had bamboo, nice like, curtains, curtains, <laughs> and just a bed on the floor, and like all these roaches who spoke to me at night. Yeah. And, oh, uh, you should sue the people who wrote Joe's was apartment. Bad. Then it's based on your life. I lived there till like two thousand nine, and then I moved to some apartment close to behind Kellogg's Diner. In the middle of Williamsburg, which was pretty awesome. I, I like that place. I only like it because it's shiny, though. No, the diner. Know, the diner. Yeah. Yeah. Kellogg's. It's, like it's very... not cool anymore now because it's all super expensive. It's like you leave there and you spent like 30 bucks. There's for no eggs. way out of it. Yeah, for eggs and, and a slice of bacon. Funkers. And some feces. That's right. Okay. <laughs> well, that's if you ask for it. Yeah. And that's like an extra 10. Insect parts. <laughs> Yeah, I and want rodent I, I'm going to specify this. I want insect parts in my feces. <laughs> right. I want them in the yes. I want them in the feces. I don't want if them. If I separate. don't see no roach wings or legs, I'm suing. That's how I roll. Nice. Yeah, I've been why. seeing. Um, you know, I have it on my little my little cone, but I've been seeing your bird's tit. Tell me about bird's tit. What bird's that? tit started well. Was it? I would. I always say it was sort of inspired by wizard skull. Because uh, oh, nice props to wizards. Wi- wizard skull. Yeah, because wizard I skull. saw oh, his. Oh his no, no no not a cup. What do you want? He's in a story. Juice. All right, here's yeah, the juice. Oh, I want Are you gonna juice. do it? So. You want juice? I thought you were gonna do one of those tricks where you know they stack the cups. <laughs> we can cool try that later. Um, but that's awesome, Wizzy. Well, because I saw his uh, his sexy Ronald sticker mm. at the I think it was at the library bar at a on a light sconce. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, that's. Ronald McDonald in front of an American flag wearing a little G-string. I was like, that's awesome. You can make stickers. A kind of light bulb went off in my head. Oh, so it was Bert's tip was a sticker first? No, no, it was a drawing that I had drawn just because I thought it was funny. And why, that, when why, that, why Bert? Well, that was inspired by da- Daniel Klaus. Because Daniel Klaus, the comic artist, had drawn Lucy Van Pelt with breasts or topless. Oh. And with breasts. Because I guess in the peanuts, she didn't really have breasts. But, and I saw that and I thought it was very funny. Um, and then, yeah, and so then I was like, who can I draw? Who would be the most unlikely thing to have breasts? And I was like, Bert. Because <laughs> Bert to me was always, I mean, I love Sesame Street. I grew up on Sesame Street. Yeah, he was the... I love Jim Henson and Frank Oz, geniuses. But uh, yeah, the, I love the puppets and the animation. Um, so he was, it was a straight man. He was pretty much a straight angry Who, man. Yeah. A straight angry dude, yeah. Bert. Oh, Ernie, Bert. Ernie was the clown. Oh, yeah, Bernie was right, goofy. Of He's oh, the right. man. Because they're based off the Odd Couple, right? Or pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. I guess. Yeah, Bert was kind of like the Felix Unger, and yeah, Ernie was the Oscar Madison. He, yeah, he was the more clueless one. That trips me out to think about like all the things that we reference in media and art that are subtle or not overt. The Odd Couple's a long time ago. Right, but I bet the Odd Couple probably had something it was kind of based Yeah, but off. Sesame Street has been yes. around for quite a while. Going back right? forever, right. though. Well, Sesame Street, yeah. How it, long does Sesame Street actually go back? Since at least the late back? 60s? Did it start in like oh, 68, 69? Because Henson, of course, was doing like puppetry, be- obviously, before. He had his own, yeah, I think he had his own puppet show in Seattle. It's called like Something in Friends, Bo- Bosworth, or... I don't, Bingo and Friends. I don't remember the history. I guess if you really think about it. It's like a black and white show. And then he did a bunch of commercials for uh, a coffee company where puppets were getting blown up and stuff. <laughs> like your commercials for TV Land, which kind of feel uh, like. Kind of, yeah. Feel like kind of the, the start of, or like some of the earliest instances on television of that, um, what would become known as like the adult swim vibe, right? Like the Tim yeah. and Eric kind of uh, weird. Um, irony or or yeah it was well, yeah it's kind of a or like an absurdist kind of comedy which wonder shows and definitely had um and i think carried it definitely carried on to xavier but uh yeah, yeah xavier was something uh, else i don't know how you guys got that on television it's awesome yeah i mean i think like i think that's why it's i so good. i always wonder if you could do that now and i don't i think it'd be hard 
Yeah, definitely. To do. I mean, or at um, least to do the the things they had done. Yeah, they did a lot of really good. Um, they hey, did a lot it. of. <laughs> hey, look at us! On there. Hey. Have you have you ever seen this guy, Steve, nineteen eighty nine? No, he looks like he could. Steve, nineteen eighty nine. He he eats like ancient MREs on YouTube. Oh, that's oh yes, I love him. Yeah, yeah. the shirt says Botulism he, City. He always says, um, "What do you say? Nice belt or nice air?" And he lets it out. He's like, "Oh, nice hiss." Nice hiss. Yeah, yeah. he's like, "Oh, exactly." Nice hiss. And he'll eat like sixty-year-old canned hot dogs. I watched him eat hardtack from the 1800s. Right, that was like the oldest thing he ever ate. And I think they're like, the only reason that was like even still preserved was it was just like drenched in formaldehyde. Yeah. Say, if you're wearing a, a Steve uh, Never MR heard of eater, shooting ice. No, he eats like, um, he just eats a bunch of terrible things and downloads, he downloads. <laughs> he um, he downs like a whole bottle of like this. Like he'll drink oh, this yeah. entire oh. bottle. Or 151. In one swig. That's, that sounds dangerous. Yeah, well, I, I can't believe he's alive. He di- he's still alive. He's still he's alive. Still he's alive. on TikTok. And the weird thing is it's kind of sad now because it's like, you know, he made himself famous by chugging entire bottles of alcohol, like eating things that are inedible, being like this kind of crayons, uh, like, a know, whole, like a freak like show, 50, okay. yeah, yeah. A fifty pack of crayons. Yeah. And now he's just kind of on TikTok with like a sign behind him. It's like I'm shoe nice. And he just kind of sits there and he's like, right? <laughs> he's just online waiting for people to, to die. gift him. But if you were in a Steve shirt, like what you watch YouTube then? Like what are the I YouTubers? watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah, I do too. What are your What are you watching right now? I wa- I watch a lot of old uh, late night with David Letterman's. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of Chris Elliott clips. <laughs> do, you, do you watch those like um, deep dives? I, I'm a big fan of. You like Cabin Boy? Ca- you know, I've only seen it <laughs> once. I have to watch it again. It's it's bad. it's brilliant. I, I, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. I remember it being really bad. Chris but, Elliott is a genius. Uh, Cabin Boy is a cinematic masterpiece. What, and, what was the name um, of his show? Get a Life. Get, Get a Life, life yeah. is also genius. Right. Uh, the yeah. Spewy episode in particular. Yeah, I but love I Chris Elliott. Um, YouTubers, I'm, I want to know because I've been I've been watching a lot. I need some Rex. Basically. I've been well. I've been watching this guy. His name is Chris something, and he does this really funny um, dig. Well, he he has uh, he does Obi Wan. Uh, who's the other guy? Who's Obi Wan's master? Qui Qui Jin Qui Jin Qui Gon Jin and Anakin, and they're just like sitting on couches watching the Phantom Menace. Uh huh. And he does like the, the deep fake faces on them. And he does really like really good impressions of, of all three, but it's the same guy. Um, so I've been watching that. They're just watching The Phantom Menace and they're really taking digs at Anakin. Nice. In his like horrible like pickup style with uh, Padme. Yeah, that was a pretty cringe movie. Yeah. That, that Anakin heavy movie was bad. Yeah. That's cool. I like the deep fake stuff. There's a couple people doing that. Like, oh, do you see the Gary Busey deep fake that's like going viral? I, I thought that was really him. No, that's the one where he's talking about butter. Yes. Right? No, that's not him. Okay. That's, that's a, not that, him? No, that's an AI deep fake. Okay. Uh, that's, that's really good because I really thought that was him. Oh, uh, yeah, we're me getting too. into it now. Yeah. That, Dude, that's, that's fucked up. No, that's not Gary Busey. That's a comedian with, with an AI face on. I'm going to kill okay. myself. Yeah. No, I thought that was <laughs> real too. I reposted that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny. It's funny as all fuck, but it's not. It's not actually fuck? Gary Busey. No one's gonna no. be able to tell what the f- anything anymore. That's it. We've We're been fine. duped. You've already been duped. You know when? Well, this is like maybe a month ago, but I said, you know, they're striking. I think it's like almost up to 150 days of uh, SAG striking. I think yeah. close or one. Well, haven't the writers been on strike even longer? Actors and write. Yeah, both. Like the ri- the writers started. <laughs> the writers and then, started, and then SAG right. joined in, right? Right, and then the piano tuners union, the piano tuners union. They're in. Did they really? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's an old the Simpsons p- joke. I like that one. That's funny. Um, yeah, I don't. Even I mean, know. they brought Little Sebastian out, so who's you know little, it's serious from yeah, Parks and he? Parks and Recreation. Oh, I'm, never I'm a little bit of a basic bitch. I watch Parks and Rec and The Office and all that, and it's a really it's a miniature horse. Oh, okay. It's an a, a real horse. It's a real I, horse. The I, whole meme on the show is that this horse is like the best thing ever, and everyone just loves it for no fucking reason. I, yeah. I watched the whole Arnold documentary on Netflix, and he uh, owns a tiny horse. It's like a dog. It like follows him, and w- and it hangs with his dogs. It's cool. I might That's do that. That's pretty cool. I, room. I, I like a horse that I'm, thinks I'm it's a dog. Oh yeah, the horse is. Uh, he like you know. Was it raised by dogs? Arnold. <laughs> yeah, Arnold. <laughs> no, my favorite thing about Arnold, though, if we're talking about Arnold, Arnold, uh, he, you got to respect the man for being in the military barracks in Austria. He said, this is like one of his old roommates there said that he told him, he's like, I'm going to go to America. I'm going to become a big movie star. I'm going to marry a Kennedy. And he that was his plan. That was his plan. And he Before he even came it. to America. In the barracks in the military in Austria, he like, like, knew what he was going to do. 
And he came and did it, and then became the governor of all cauliflower. The governor. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean all cauliflower? I'm the governor oh, of California. California. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they the same cauliflower. Have, yeah. I don't know if anybody knows. Fuck that guy, though. He, like, made my, he made my college tuition go up, so I'm mad. Yeah, well, he, they have the band Austrian Death Machine. Not him. Yeah, I was about to say, that does but not sound You know sound the like band, him. the thrash metal band Austrian Death Machine? <laughs> I do oh, not. they're awesome. It's the guy from the band, uh, he did a lot of steroids and threatened to kill his wife and his kids. I forgot. But that band, and then he has this band, and each song is like, you know, who is your daddy, what does he do, Rubby ba- rubber uh, buggy baby bumpers, <laughs> you know. Uh, Chris Benoit? Is it Chris Benoit? Is no, that th- Chris Benoit, isn't he uh, WWF? Did yeah. he die? I thought something happened like fucked wife? up. Th- I thought it was he like bad. had a crazy Yeah, he was a steroid. wrestler. He, he had a steroid out. freak out. Yeah, and he like stabbed his wife and Jesus kid. Christ. Right. I thought that's who you're talking about. I think that's who it is. Yeah, Chris, right. Chris well, Benoit. Well, this Chris yeah. Benoit. But there's that guy. No, this guy was in a band called like, uh, I forgot. I'll have to research that. But Austrian Death Machine, you know. I don't now know. Zero Tell me. was just plain zero. <laughs> I have to look it up. It's awesome though. They're good. That's too good. What do you got? Oh, oh. Is this joint. time we talk to chat? We talk to chat. Are we going to talk to chat on here? Chad? We're it, talking no. to Chad. Talk to chat. Hey, Chad. Oh, right. that's what the kids say. They say talk, talk to, to chat. chat. Chat is like regarded as a person now, you know. Chat so, or Chad? No, chat. Like when you're live streaming, but I like any chat. Or platform. Anytime you're live streaming, you have a live chat going. All one people, and everybody refers to it like it's a being. They're okay. like, they're like, what does chat think? I can't wait to die. Talk to chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't wait to die. <laughs> don't, don't resist. Just don't resist. Oh, Just welcome God. our new robot overlord. When's the asteroid coming? I, it's fine. Did you ever used to watch Amazing Stories? Do you remember that? I it lasted for like maybe one or two. I seasons. probably watched maybe the first couple episodes. It was a mid '80s show. Spielberg directed a couple of those, right? It was kind of like a more whimsical Twilight Zone, but still, like at the end, you realize you're like you watch it now, and you're like, man, that shit's fucking dark. But Amazing weird, Stories is, yeah. is and there, there was ta- I remember Tales from the Dark Side, which I think was around the same time, which I think I watched more, which is definitely more like a Twilight Zone horror. Do you remember Tales from the Dark Side? Was that a movie or no? Was it, it, it was it was a, a series. Show. Well, I definitely watched Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, that's for sure. Tales, and then they had a, a, a shitty show called Monsters. And I forgot what, it was like AMC or some cable, because I had the uh, illegal box, and my dad's like, Oh, yeah, the illegal, with the little switch on, anybody. the toggle switch on the back? It was just a gray box, and we had everything. Yeah. And my dad's like, Don't tell anybody in high school. They're going to take it away. Oh. Let them take away. And I realized, you did, know. Did I you don't... split the cable from the outside you and had like a steal it from, a, you had from a the neighbor? <laughs> the neighbor and then friend. We, you know, I remember we had, doing that. We had Channel 99. Oh, my oh, dad. Yeah. Was, that, was, so that, was, was that, like, that the one that had like Robin Bird? No, that's the one that had porn. So yeah. it was like, well, yeah. it was like the remember that, oh. it was like the Robin Bird show was on public access. I don't know what channel in New York. This was just like straight up like Playboy like porn, and I was yeah. like, well, obviously I'm not going to oh, tell like anybody at school because I don't want this taken away from me. God forbid they take away my nudies. Your illegal, <laughs> your illegal 99. cable box. Well, I would, either I would it was zero, you. zero or 99, one of those. But yeah. I was like, yeah. And my dad walked in on me once. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm jacking off. Get the fuck out of here. And, and that, that was, was that. Yeah, that was I'm that. watching soft Playboy oh, porn. That was awesome. Yeah, was terrible. Bad. Thanks, Dad, for that illegal now, cable I would, box. I would try to see like chits through the squiggles. I didn't yes. have Channel 99. Best Scramble dad porn. Ever. Yeah. Scramble porn's great. Yeah. My, my dad actually, um, he worked for the cable company for a minute. So he had like a box when we were, I was a baby, you know, like a little baby. And he's in Austin. He had like a box that would just control people's cable in his home because of something he, he, was he could remotely like control could, like, people's yeah he could, like, turn things cable. off or like change things <laughs> and he said that he had that a is, friend that is too much power for any one man yeah too much power for what for the whole austin area for the metro wow. area austin texas area and he had said that he had a friend who worked at the cable company with him who was in a band and so what they did was they recorded a music video like in their garage and they put on like the MTV text for the for the name yeah. of their album yeah. and the song. And then he just like when there's supposed to be a commercial break, he just oh, shoved the VHS tape in there and made it look like his band was on MTV. Oh, man. Like at the cable station. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Can't do that no more. No. Remember uh, TV was hacked in Chicago and they had the uh, Max Hendrum? Yeah, that was weird. Max yeah. Yeah. That was like one of the only TV hacks that ever actually happened. I liked Max yeah. Hendrum. Yeah, he was fan. cool. He was like, boo, boo, boo. But this was a weird, like, 
hostage situation type Max Headroom was like a bad mask and they had just like a weird like tinfoil background. Yeah, it was it's awesome. great though. Nice and creepy. I mean, that's and the I way forget it was during be. something. Was it during like a World Series? Oh, it was game during or was... something fairly important. I remember yeah. correctly. I don't know exactly, but um, I mean, you know, it's a sad because that that all like a- hacking airwaves like that's over. Analog TV is gone. Thank right? God we lived it. Yeah, I mean, I grew up with the internet, is what I always say. It's like I was yeah. there for its evolution. As I got older, like it. Well, we talked like, about this. I, I had a BBS. Yeah. A bullet and board system. Of course. Yeah. I played MUDs for 14 years. I like, know what you guys are talking about. A MUD is a multi-user dungeon, which is a video game played over Telnet with nothing but text. Okay. So it's like you're standing in the middle of a forest yeah. and Apple is here. I remember a Star Trek game that was all text. Yeah. There's probably a lot of them. There's... there's if you go to mudconnector.com to this day, you can find You can like, still play them? Yeah, you can play oh, them and you shit. can find like 1,800 like archived ones of, you know, the, the ones that were based off of wolves or vampires or Star Wars. Or, yeah. There's even educational ones where it was like you had to like be an engineer and like solve problems, but it's all just text. Yeah. I'm obsessed with that shit. I still love it. I think that's going to have a comeback. Wait till you, there'll be, there'll be another like text only game. I hope so. Soon. <clears throat> well, is, it, was it the, or, is it the Oregon Trail? Wasn't that originally like an all text? Almost. I think the first Oregon Trail either had like ASCII art. Yeah. Which is like, you know, right, yeah, yeah. little characters. I think it had like characters. ASCII art, but was basically a mud. Yeah. But right. mud's multi user dungeon. B- BBSs yeah. were bulletin board systems. It was like direct connect. So someone had to like, you had this like thing that someone could connect to and go on your, your it's not a website, it's the bulletin board system. Yeah. And yeah. you can have like games for download and text-based adventure games. You but could ha- you could post riddles and it jokes. It was a weird thing. You'd have to look into it, but it it was a strange. Did you ever go on BBSs? Oh yeah, I mean, oh, I did. was all over. Yeah, I was over. And then the MIR, MIRC, MIRC, Internet IRC, Relay Chat. Yeah, where it was mostly for hackers, but like I'm, I met my best friend of talking earlier about you know people that you can rely on that you know really care about you or you've had for a long time. My oldest friend I met when we were 14, and I met him through AOL because we both shared an interest in phone hacking, <laughs> and we were. You mean uh, freaking? Freaking. That's right. Whoa. Yeah, making the. Did you, uh, did you have the? Uh, what is it? The Captain Crunch whistle? Yep, the Captain Crunch whistle. The blue, the blue box, or the Aqua box, or whatever black I used box. to do. The black box. You go to. We would go to Radio Shack, and we would buy one of those. Like, so they made these things when you had a rotary phone, and then they switched over to the digital system. You'd have to buy like a handheld number pad, and you pick up your rotary phone. You put the number pad up to your speaker and your phone, and you dial that way because yeah. your rotary thing doesn't work anymore. So you have to dial down the line with tones. So you just buy that at Radio Shack, throw it open, put a new crystal chipset in it to change the frequency, and then three three two one was like a quarter, and like you know you oh could, yeah and you could have it play back automatically. So every time you call up the um, you use a payphone in order to do this, you'd have to take the phone off, press zero, get the operator, and be like, "There's shit all over this keypad." Like I just I need to call somebody and uh, this thing is disgusting. There's like it's stuck. Like there's I can't move it. Can you just dial a number for me, please? And they would be like, okay. And then you tell them the number, and then you press a little pre-recorded button. He goes beep, 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 and then they would put you through. Yeah. And it worked like all the time. Like most of the time, it worked. One time it didn't work, and the guy was like, "Where'd you record those tra- those fucking tones on oh, a train man. track, you little piece of shit? I'm sitting <laughs> in the fence in. Like we're gonna get you." And of we course, know we where just, you live. <clears throat> yeah, we just ran back into the, like the Chili's with our parents yeah. and hid. And <laughs> fine. I had That's a uh, payphone in my lunchroom in my, in my school. So I used to fucking dial random 1-800 numbers and you know, some would lead to like people who owned them like, hello, I'm like, you know, and just fuck with them. Like, I would like to order 10 pounds of feces, please. Like, what? Like, I want your shit. Like, That's what? A- like, all over me. Like, what? <laughs> I like, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't paying attention for two seconds and I looked up and then you're talking about being covered in shit. How did you get there so fast? Um, Dialing from the school lunchroom payphone. It's just what I usually think about. <laughs> Thank you for being honest God with me. Damn it! All right. You got me again. <laughs> anyway. The covers come flying off. Just. Yep, you're exposed. <laughs> exposed. I'll make it, please. 
his mom, put him back. Well, Jim, if you're not up to anything lately, um, is there anything? I guess you don't got anything to plug. Then. Future plans? Yeah, or anything like to plug? What, you got? What, what can people buy right is now? It's my to ultimate make your life? dream. Yeah. Just to cross over to the other side peacefully. You're already there. It's too young. You're too young. No. I'll go with you. <laughs> I'll I'm go ready, with you, Jim. You're ready already. I'll well, I mean, I've, I've been. That's the other thing I've been watching on YouTube. These NDE episodes. NDE. What's that? Yeah, near death experience oh. episodes, and I get so jealous of some of these people. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they go, they it. see the other side. It's beautiful. They're in, embraced in the loving arms of whatever deity is up there, and they see all their friends and pets and stuff, but and they're they like, "This back. is great." Well, the pictures, the pictures in the uh, Jehovah's Witness books look pretty sweet. Like, like yes. there are all these different types of people in this beautiful environment, and like people are hanging out with lions, yeah, and like, like giraffes, and, lambs. and like they're allowed to talk, and but like, yeah, the lions and the lambs and the aliens, no beef, they're just yeah. loving each other, and the aliens are like, oh, let's have an orgy, and then Jesus comes down in a gumby suit, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> And then you're Riding like, pokey. wow, this is heaven. Yeah. This but is then heaven. there's a, the, most of them, obviously, they're, they're near death experiences. They're not death experiences. So they gently get pushed back. They're like, you're not ready. You yeah. need to go back. And then I feel so horrible. But do you they're want- like, they don't want to go back. Who would? <laughs> you're ready to be. You're ready to go into the light, is what you're saying. Yeah. 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 But there's more, there's more for them to do. They don't know what it is, but they're right. like, you got to go back and finish Finish your game. Maybe that's what you think you need. You need somebody to be like, hey, Maybe. Uh, you've got more to do. But I, uh, people tell me I, that they, I might need that kick in the yeah, pants. Yeah, but people An tell NDE me, kick in the pants. Did you do the DMT? No. I, I haven't. But, but apparently say, that's, that is similar to, yeah, having a near-death experience. But then some people are like, well, you do DMT in like one minute could seem like 200 years. And that's when I'm like, <laughs> I, uh, I am my That's best not thing. true. That's <laughs> no, not possible. That's I'm well, out. Time doesn't exist. That's when you true. That's a, that's a nonlinear time. Right. Thing. Well, yeah. that's but also. I don't like that. You ever had a dream that you don't like, like, that? like ever? I don't want to be stuck in. Some have you ever been? Up world. Have you ever been anesthetized, like just fully blacked out? Actually, no. Really? No. Oh, it's great. I love it. <laughs> Was it whippets? No, no. I I had a colonoscopy, and they oh. they're like, we we're, we're gonna stick something in your butt, so we're gonna put you out. Right. Was like, at a fine. certain age, that that start has counting to be backwards, done, right? Yeah, after fifty, you should get you a colonoscopy. Get, right. No, yeah. and they and you get pictures and everything. It's great. But That's cool. the best part is when they put you out. Yeah, it's, it's just like you you don't exist. You just wake up, right? Non existence. Like, you wake up and like you're like, Why the fuck did you wake up. me up? I had that a lot growing up as a kid though. I would like go to sleep, close my eyes, and then immediately have the sensation of like waking up again. And you're like, like I don't belong here. Yeah, no, I was just like I didn't sleep, you know. I was like I didn't feel like I slept. I felt like I went Oh, I, okay. Like you I yeah, laid you down, go close out, my eyes and then open yeah, up again. It's like a second later. A second later. <laughs> Twelve hours has passed. Yeah, exactly. That or twenty years. It's the Rip Van Winkle syndrome. I, I when I was a kid I used to try like as I was going to sleep, I'm like, I'm gonna catch the exact moment that, that you, you fall you, asleep. You pass through. And obviously you can't. But it's I hard. Try to it happened it like to me a once. Butterfly. Like I try to catch it like a butterfly. Yeah. Like I'm gonna do it tonight. It's more I'm like gonna... a smoky curtain, though. Right. Exactly. That you pat that mm. that uh, you pass through. That doesn't really lift. Did you ever have, do you ever have lucid dreams? I tried. Were I you really where you're dreaming. I did. I tried so hard, and what I was able to do. The only thing I was able to do was I was like, I want to fly so bad. I just want to be able yeah. to fly around in the world. I was able to be in a storage unit that my parents had and like, you know, those halls of those rolling doors just forever. Right. <clears throat> and I was able to like float off the ground and like push myself off. So the you, walls. but you were, aw- you were aware that you were dreaming. I was a hundred percent aware that I was dreaming and that I could do what I wanted to do, which was fly. But, but you were in a storage unit. <laughs> yeah. And I was, <laughs> and I was oh, unable to get outside. I was unable to get outside no matter how hard I tried. Well, I think that's probably it, says a lot about your, your psyche. I guess, man. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, have you have have you guys ever died in your dream? No, I don't think you can. Yeah, no, I did. I've, I've been hurt. I've been oh, like shot no, no, and stabbed. No. I fell out of a building and I turned into mush. And I remember really? being just picked splattered. up on the on the gurney and being and but, but you were dead. conscious of it, so you're not. Really I dead, knew right? I was dead in the dream. Did you leave your died. dream body? No, nah, I just like continued in my dead body. But you were just you were just like hamburger. I was dead. I was thinking about this last night, and it's I really was scary. Totally dead. The idea that you can die and like be fully conscious and awake. They you say won't it's die. they say you it's won't. six seconds, 
Like one, if you got your head cut off, like you, your eyeballs would be able to see for like six seconds. That's like at the end I've of heard, a, yeah, I've heard about yeah. Cell Block That's a really 99. Long time. You ever see that? Yeah, that's Bra- scary. Brawl yeah. in Cell Block ninety nine. With Vince Vaughn. No. And he kicks the guy's heads off, head off at like the <laughs> very end of the movie into a shithole. Amazing. I might even make him not. I mean, he yeah. literally kicks his head he, off. That's his awesome. Body. He <laughs> smashes his head in with all of his weight. I will watch any movie that has heads just at the, being kicked off. Oh, watch, but it's not, uh, it's not like he's standing up and he does like a roundhouse kick and no, knocks his No, this head off guy's leaning over and he's bashing his head until his head literally breaks off into a pit of shit. Well, and you're still going to be alive for six seconds. To, and then to what's his name the from Miami Vice kills him? Don Johnson. I'm not joking. Oh, not the other guy. Uh, the, the, Michael. Michael right. Uh, his last the wider guy. No one remembers that And guy. Uh, yeah, sorry if the I ruined uh, <laughs> Brawl and Cell Block 99 for you, y'all. But uh, Spoiler alert. Yeah, great spoiler movie. Alert. Great Vince Vaughn movie. Oh, my God. Epic. A tip for lucid dreaming, which yes. I learned from an Omni magazine from 1981, Ooh. was to, while you're awake, just remind yourself that you're not dreaming. Oh. Like for the, yeah, Several for the times the day. a day. Just remind yourself. Remind yourself that like you're right not now, dreaming. I'm not dreaming. And then when suddenly you find yourself in a weird place and you say, I'm not dreaming, you're like, no, wait a minute. Oh. This, this is too weird for reality. Mm. I must be dreaming. And then your brain clicks over. You catch that ephemeral butterfly you're always chasing after. Wow. Shove it in your pocket. And then do whatever you want Rub in your, your dick dream. all over it. I feel like I have too much ADHD. I'm like, and then I'm like, do, 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 let's make a song. Let's dance around. Let's get real nude and play in the mud. And then that like, continues until like, let's fly in the sky. Let's go to the moon. Let's. Is that what so your dreams like, are like? No, actually, that's just all what his brain's like. waking brain is super, like. No, yeah, that's my waking pain. Yeah, no, my yeah, dreams. Yeah, I'm, I'm all, interested in hearing about the dreams. All my dreams are super dark and fucked up, and I okay. barely remember them. I just feel like a lot of energy. You die a lot in your dreams. Like that makes sense. No, no, only you're jumping off buildings, you're splattering no, on the sidewalk. No, it's always always an adventure, but like I feel the energy that w- took to live that reality that I'm not actually physically in. Or maybe I am when I dream. I don't know. But I feel the loss of energy from that adventure. You're physically in my tired physical when you life. wake up. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel that adventure, but I don't quite really know what happened, but I kind of have ideas. I don't know. It's weird. But I, I don't remember super specifics very rarely, but they're all fucked up adventures and, like, I don't know. Yeah, they can, they can be exhausting. I had a dream once where... <clears throat> not a dream. <laughs> I had a not dream a dream. once. I woke up from it and I had this intense experience of the entire dream playing backwards. Like when you die and you're supposed to see your life flash before your eyes. Your life review. Yeah. That's what the NDE review. ears call it. Yeah. The life review. You get a life review. So I think that does happen <laughs> because I had it for my dream as if my dream was a life. And the thing that was weird about that dream was that I was asleep for seven hours. Exactly seven hours. I counted. And in my dream, I felt like I was there for three days. Uh, And I went to sleep in my dream. I woke up in my dream. I showered in my dream. I was like used to my life in my dream for three whole days. And then when I woke up seven hours later, this sensation happened where like I literally saw the entire storyline of the dream just go. And then I woke up. And the second I was a conscious after experiencing that, I couldn't remember a fucking thing from the dream. Like it was all gone except for the very last scene where I'm like, I'm like in a burned out building behind a boulder like this guy running around I've got like a gun like a first person shooter or something it was exciting but that's literally all I remember except for that unnerving feeling of having the entire experience flash and yeah. having that distortion of time you know which apparently DMT is what releases in your brain when you sleep from your pineal gland according to the internet which I can never trust again <laughs> you but, said penal gland oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute Pineal. Pineal. No, but I don't know what that means, but I, I, I would imagine that, that, that I could see it happening with my life when I die. Yeah. Because I had it with my dream. So. Yeah. Re- I mean. I am not looking gotta, forward to that. You got to do something while you're here. You might as well do something. 
I hope it's the I hope that I experience my life review not from my own eyes, but like <laughs> from somebody in the room looking at me. Yeah. Because I've done a lot of stuff in my life to make myself happy. Well, I think I think that's that's <laughs> the way it works. I think you you see it in third person. I don't think you really. You know, I don't. Well, I think it. Yeah. Well, maybe you have the option. It's like maybe like a video game. Like you could do first person, but you have the option to do third person. So I feel like you playing anything <clears throat> lately? Um, Any games? Do you no, game? no, no. I mean, like no, just like on my phone. I play. I mean, I'm playing Genshin Impact, and I'm playing it on my phone. Their phone games are legit now. I'm doing um, this really hard one. It's called like Pixelated Dungeon or something. Pixelated Shit. Dungeon. It, Ooh, it sounds cool. I, it it's, sounds like it's you would pretty like. good. It's it's impo- oh, shattered pixel dungeon. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's pretty that good, but it's good. really hard. You only get like one life. God. And, um, oh, I love those. It's like a roguelike. If you make one mistake, it's like real life. You're so dead. it's like a roguelike, like a rogue game, like roguelike yeah. game. What do they call it? Is it roguelite or roguelike? I never know. It's either roguelike. <laughs> roguelite or, yeah, or it's roguelike. Either, it's either roguelite <laughs> or roguelike. I, think I it's guess rogue-like. if it's not rogue, it's either light or like. Right. I feel like if there's any game that I was going to play and go back to, it would yeah. be like Civilization 2. That was a good one. Yeah. But I think you would love it. I have a VR headset Missed that it. has a pixelated dungeon game. So it looks like kind of like Minecraft style. It's super pixelated and like old school game. Is it like Doom kind of? Sort of, but it's like VR, but it's more like, um, you know, it's a dungeon crawler. So you go into a dungeon, you have like a little you sword. Can, you can upgrade arrow. your armor and weapons. Exactly. And, and you can kill skeletons, spiders, and skeletons. Yeah. That's I all like that's that. important. Like and that the weird thing is, it actually scared me more than like these big AAA games that were yeah. like, um, like you know, there's a Silent what is it, a Walking Silent Dead game. Hill. No, right. I was gonna say Silent Hill. It's better franchise, but there's a Walking Dead uh, game that's like really good graphics. It's really scary. But I actually had the biggest like heart palpitations uh, from this pixelated game. Right. Because <laughs> I was Probably, like, yeah. I was really into it, you know. Yeah. And like your imagination kind of starts filling in the. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then like a ghost. Filling a silly, in the cracks. A silly 2D ghost comes out. And I was like, woo, I'm just like, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> like shit my pants. I'm like, oh my God, that's so scary. But that's cool. If you like that kind of stuff, I got to show you that. I'm going to throw you in. I'd like to see. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to experience that in VR. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like VR. Do you have, have you ever tried it? No, once I did it at mm. a at a gallery, mm. and it was cool. Yeah, it, it was weird, like how the you could see like the boundaries, but I was it was I was still it was kind of like a small space. It was at um, was it the Newell Gallery? You know, you know that place, oh, the Newell it, Gallery, uh, the New Museum. No, no, it's in Brooklyn. Oh. I think it's called Newell. Oh, Newell. Anyway, they they had like a little VR thing, and yeah, it was it was interesting because it, yeah, it, it's it is to me it was very dreamlike almost luc- like a lucid dream because mm. it really takes you out of your reality and puts you into this it absolutely strange does. space. Well, that's actually what I do with it. So I sleep in VR. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll put my headset on. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. I will do this. Uh, I don't do it every do night. You sleep upside down? I, I don't sleep upside down, but I'll put my headset on and I'll go into VR chat and I'll find yeah. a room that's themed about sleeping. So you find like a big virtual bed with like you know, whales going outside in the windows and all these like beautiful ephemeral sounds and stuff. And I'll and you're just on a fall spaceship. Asleep. Yeah, like a spaceship or a weird yeah. castle or whatever. And it's weird because sometimes you can make it private, but I'll just leave it open. So So people can walk in on you and mm-hmm. smoke in a Newport and Totally. Like, yeah, what I need the that fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I need that old feeling of diesel. I miss him. Yeah, you should create you a know? new VR that you know I should make a VR reminiscent of your, of all your, my your shitty apartments. Futon experience. That's yeah. a good that's actually a great idea. Um, have you done? I've seen that uh, the uh, the Titanic. Yeah, the Titanic. That looks one. awesome. There's the International Space Station. Is a good one too. Really? Yeah, but I'll fall asleep in there, and like every yeah. once in a while, I'll wake up to like random people talking. <laughs> and they'll be like, just looking over you, hovering over you, and be like, "Yeah." And then well, you wake up in. Your, they don't know you're asleep though. No, well, they do because it's a sleeping room. Could you? So they oh, okay. can figure Could it you out. explain? Yeah. I, we were we yeah. were talking about this uh, mm-hmm. a while ago, but. Um, you were talking about how on TikTok people make money where they go to sleep and then people can like blast sound effects to wake that person up. Sleep torture. And they pay they pay money to like yeah. You ever is heard it like this? a wake up call service or just Oh, uh, it's not ex- a, just explain to this fuck quickly with because this shit's you insane. This, this gotta, shit's fucking no. nuts. Okay, I feel like this is coming. We're going to go over a little over time and that's okay cuz this is a crazy. good one. Sounds crazy. This is a good one. So on TikTok, there's lives, which is the most popular thing. And I got on TikTok because it overtook Google as the number one visited site on earth. Yeah. So I figured that would be the place to go now. So uh, I f- live streaming became a big part of it. And there are these people who live stream, they're sleeping. 
and they okay. have you can give gifts and they're different gifts so every give, gift you give they have rigged up to a system that will like put a fog machine in their face blow an air horn scream a certain sound like you know wake up wake up wake up wake up and yeah. so you'll tip them money and then they will be disturbed and, and forced <laughs> yeah. to wake up with like strobe lights in their face and the more upset they seem, like the more popular these rooms are. <laughs> so it's basically like a dark web, like red room, like pay to kill somebody on live cam. But it's like, yeah. you know, kind of more mellowed out. Bizarre. It's fucked up. It's so weird. Bizarre. Yeah. It's a, it's a very bizarre. strange world. But I've also found really beautiful things. All right. One more time. I don't want to know what your idea is of beautiful things. No, I've also found stuff on there too. Like, I mean, it, it's a two-edged sword. You get all these weird new genres of like torture porn and um, strange uh, ways that people are making money. But you know, I found like a blind brother and sister from Mexico like sing music all the time. To, that's how they make their money. They're like on TikTok and they're just playing music, and they're so good. And I just like put it on all the time and like bought their record. And I'm happy about it. You, you're it's telling me they don't experience. beat each other? No, there's no beating. There's <laughs> oh no torture. God. They don't kill baby animals no, while they're masturbating. How no. do they make money then? Bye. No, just people gifting. You know. Mm. Thank you. Man. So you're saying that being nice could also do good things. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, no, no. An outrageous <laughs> idea. I'm just saying it's a uh, it's an interesting world. You're gonna have to edit that out. In. Yeah. We there obviously. will be some editing. We went we went kind of long tonight, yeah. like twice double long. That's how we roll. Hopefully it's we'll okay. just two all episodes. wake up from this dream. I, I hope we I was can gonna wake say up nice two episodes. It's, right. it's, it's it's been it's been dreamy for me at least. Thank, thank you, thank you, boys, for yeah. having me on. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for grabbing yourself during the time that we spoke to you. During the time of lucky time explosion, bing bang and right up your wazoo. Boop, 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 boop.